Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to DCS World. I'm Spud Knocker, and today, before I head out for a little practice run in the Harrier 2 with some BDU 33s, I figured I'd talk about track IR for a little bit. I've had some people comment on my videos on the DCS World Facebook group and on Hoggett about the smoothness of my track IR, and I wanted to share my settings and kind of my rationale for how I set up my track IR. So to start off, here's a photo of my computer workstation or gaming station, just so you can get a feel of the room I'm in and the physical setup of my stuff. And that will come into play in just a moment. So sorry if the quality of that picture wasn't great, just uh, took it on my iPhone really quick here. So this is going to be, you know, a pretty rough video. I'm not uh, going to pretend to be an awesome expert at setting up track IR or anything of that nature. And there are lots of awesome videos, um, one by Ralphie Dude, one by a, an English gentleman who I'm forgetting the name of, um, who are setting up track IR specifically for DCS World. Um, so if you want to more in-depth or a more detailed view of track IR in DCS world that might be a good place to go so my rationale for setting up my track IR is I always of course have a uh, track IR recenter or reset button on my HOTAS and additionally I actually have that button mapped to the cockpit view button on my HOTAS so if I'm outside here like we were when we started out and I'm looking around outside maybe doing some cinematic work looking at uh, some other jets or something or like that view we had down here when we started off and when I if I were to just jump straight into the cockpit my track IR may not be centered um, so I have those two bound to the exact same button and that way when I hop in the cockpit my view is always centered and that's something that I found really helps in terms of my yaw setting in DCS world, I want to make sure that I get a full view to my six o'clock simply by looking at the furthest edge of my screen on my right hand side there and the same thing on my left hand side. Also in track IR, the quicker you move your head, the more degrees you're gonna get in terms of how fast it turns and how much it turns. So if I look to the edge of my screen very slowly like that, I won't get as much yaw to get a look over my shoulder. But if I move it faster and move it to about the same spot, I can get a much better view. This one is a very important one. You want to be able to get a really good view. I have it set so that if I look at the edge of my screen, I get about 170 degrees of yaw. And that's important for looking down around in the cockpit and at switches behind me, as well as, of course, at my six. And I'll talk about more about switches in the cockpit in just a second, because that pairs with our pitch axis uh, in track IR. In pitch, I have this one demirrored so that I can look way up high. It's not letting me in the Harrier at the moment, but uh, if I were looking way up high, um, in a dogfight, say there's somebody coming in on my six and I'm pulling hard uh, down on the deck or way up high amongst the clouds, um, I can look up to actually see them rather than simply only looking back. Now, when it comes to looking down, I don't have the saturation or the acceleration nearly as high because I'm not usually going to be looking down at my crotch in the, in the ejection seat all that much unless there's a switch down there that I really need to get to. But it's really important to have your down view set up pretty darn well um, so that you can see switches like this digital fuel control switch here and our fuel cutoff switch back here. Now I see on YouTube videos of just people game play, you know, casual game play and things, um, a lot of times if they were to look at a switch back here or they're trying to look at something kind of over their shoulder but down low, this is where they run into issues and they start getting problems with track IR. And that's because you may have either your yaw or your pitch 
not fully set up as perfectly as potentially possible. And that will cause issues if you're trying to combine two different axes to see like uh, our digital uh, engine control switch. I think I called it the fuel control switch before, but same thing. So that's a big thing there. In terms of your z-axis of moving forward in the cockpit, I find this one to be pretty darn helpful for a lot of different reasons. Uh, you know, you can look around, things like that. Uh, in warbirds, uh, tail draggers, that's always really important so that you can kind of help yourself look up over your nose. Uh, same thing goes for your x-axis, sliding back and forth. For the most part, you don't have to do too much of a job with those, usually kind of matching what your body's doing is going to match pretty darn well with the cockpit in DCS World. The z-axis that we talked about before, I do have a bit of a higher saturation and a higher curve on that to bring myself forward as much as possible. That's really helpful if I'm looking at a switch here or something like that. It's also important just like the combination of the yaw and pitch to look at a, at a control down here to have your Z and X axis X axis is set up pretty darn well so that you can come in and look at something like this in terms of your Y axis moving up and down I don't find that one to be too big of a deal I tend to leave that one alone for the most part and maybe increase the saturation a little bit um, but other than that that one is pretty much just the default that comes with track IR. Uh, rotation, not nearly as important as any of the other ones. You may want to rotate your head if say you're in a prolonged bank coming into the airport or something of that nature, but that one I tend to leave just at the default position. Maybe a little tiny increase in the saturation of the curve but that's not necessarily needed. Just the regular one-to-one -one movement of my head side to side like that is usually totally sufficient. When it comes to the environment that your track IR is in, I use just the regular old uh, track clip that attaches to a baseball cap, and I find that to be totally uh, adequate. Um, I know that some people prefer one over the other or don't like either, or, you know, whatever, but uh, I find the track clip works just fine. Um, and that really helps if you have the right environment. You don't want to have any light sources, any lamps turned on or can lights up in your ceiling turned on or a window behind you because then the track IR camera will get really confused as to what's tracking, what's not, and you'll get strange artifacts and that awful, you know, crazy movement that you'll see when things go wrong with track IR. Also, the amount of distance you are from track IR can really help. I'm roughly about maybe a foot and a third or a foot and a half from uh, my track IR sensor. And I have the track IR positioned above my head for the most part. My eyeballs are usually looking right in the center of my screen, um, or maybe a little bit higher, maybe the, maybe the top two thirds of my screen. but. Uh, for the most part, that's where you want to be. You want to have make sure you have adequate room to move forward and adequate room to look down without it losing a tracking solution. Because when you lose a tracking solution, of course, you get that awful, uh, crazy movement. Um, like I said, no windows, no lights, nothing like that behind you, and that, that will also really help with not just the smoothness, but also the tracking uh, accuracy of it. All right. So um, now that we're, we've taken a look at uh, moving around in the Harrier, we'll go ahead and alt tab out to our track IR software and we will take a look at that and I'll tell, show you my profile and uh, help explain a little bit more what we took a look at here in the cockpit. All right, so here's our track IR software. We can see of course that if we looked in, in the background, both are running and both are tracking at the same time. You can even make this guy a little bit smaller. When it comes to your yaw, I basically have it set up to the default setting that comes with DCS World, just with the curvature uh, ratcheted up about five pushes of the button to increase your curvature. 
you don't want it to be too crazy uh, to that the point where you get sick. Um, when it comes to pitch, I have these decoupled so they are not mirrored. So looking up, you get a heck of a lot more acceleration in terms of degrees of your actual head versus degrees that you see in the cockpit. So as we can see here, looking up about 15 degrees gives me almost 90 degrees on the actual cockpit. Uh, I have it set to a less of a curve and less of a saturation when I look down because like I said before, I don't really have a huge need to look down at my crotch all the time, but I do need to have that be in a good range so that I can look back at switches or things in the back panel of my cockpit without having uh, any tracking issues. And that's really important, you know, trying to get something hard to reach on startup or you need to hit something like in an emergency, you really need to be able to get that guy pretty well. Roll, I just have this, the curvature increased a little bit, but not the most important thing in the world. That's up to you. X-axis moving side to side. I believe I have this one basically at the default once again. I just have the curvature bumped up about two clicks or so. Y-axis up and down. I think I increased the curvature a little bit, but uh, other than that, totally default just like before because you really don't need that much Y movement in your cockpit, to be honest. Z-axis, not quite as important like before. I think I was playing around with this. This is why my, my dots are kind of everywhere in terms of my acceleration. But uh, just increased my curvature, I think only one click there. And we're just able to move side to side, just enough that's totally adequate for the game. Um, it's pretty much at the default setting. Uh, in terms of motion control, I of course have my track clip selected because that's what I'm working with. Um, my speed, I have that turned down to 0.5 and my smoothness turned up all the way to high. I really need it to be smooth or it gives me a headache personally and it just makes, you know, it makes no sense to my brain if it uh, is going crazy on me all the time. So that's why I really worked really hard to get my my profile to where I wanted it to be. Um, decreasing the speed and increasing the smoothness makes it seem like it's harder to move your head around and it's a lot slower to move your head around in the cockpit. But um, once you play with your curvature and your saturation dots and things on your profile, like, a, like a, my pitch is a perfect example, um, you'll actually find that you can get just enough speed coupled with the maximum amount of smoothness in the cockpit. And that is basically it when it comes to my track IR profile. It's really a personal thing. You got to really play with it and figure out what is best for you and what is best for your environment, what's best for uh, your screen, all these kinds of things. But I think track IR is definitely uh, one of those things that's required if you want to get any kind of immersion uh, outside of VR. A uh, couple rule of thumbs is just make sure your environment is set up correctly. You don't have any light sources behind you. Um, you don't have any uh, bright reflective objects behind you or anything like that. As well as if you look up at the top of your screen, you get a nice look all the way up. And same thing for the sides. And of course down. And that's basically my kind of couple rules of thumb for setting up track IR. Uh, in DCS world, I hope I was helpful. If not, there are plenty of other videos out there for you to take a look at. So thanks a lot, guys. If you liked the video, please like, like and subscribe and fly safe.